I mean, there's never been more opportunity for distraction. <laughs> and so it's a risk for all of us, and it is doubly a risk for our teams. If we as leaders aren't focused, you know, think about the leadership team being at the core and the lines get a little fractured. Well, the farther out that goes, you know, the farther out the team members' sort of beliefs around priorities become and therefore their activities and even a 10 degree difference in leadership alignment can lead to a 90 degree difference in where the teams are focusing. And so focus and priorities is a modern superpower and a requirement of modern leaders. And it was a really interesting moment where this became a, a critical lesson for me. So I was doing humanitarian work in Ethiopia. I've done work in Eastern Africa for many years and was traveling with a few folks who had never been to the region. And we were working in conflict zones in villages to help these villages help themselves. So it was a hand up, not a hand out. We were there to ask, you know, what are your priorities? How can we support? Uh, and, and where can we help you help yourself? And so we were sitting around a circle and the village leaders, so there's leaders appointed for every part of the village's needs. Uh, one of my friends who had never been to the region said, what's your number one priority? And they said, it's water. What's your number two priority? What's your number three priority? Because as typical Westerners from privileged environments with lots of choice and resources, which is the case in many companies, um, we want the list, right? We want the list of 10 things because that's just the way we've learned to work. And when my friend asked for the number two priority and the number three priority, the village leaders laughed, which needed no translation, even though everything else needed translation. And they said, our number two priority is water. Our number three priority is water. It doesn't matter if you build us a school. If we don't have access to clean water and we don't have the ability to get the water where we need it, no one's going to be in those classes and no teachers are going to come. It doesn't matter if you donate us books. It doesn't matter if you... Um, teach us about hygiene or agriculture if we can't get this thing done first. And I was so struck by the clarity of priorities that if this one thing isn't done, all the other things are borderline fruitless. And if it does get done, all the other things will be more successful. And I had this out-of-body experience as a leader. I was leading Cinnabon at the time with many competing priorities. And I thought, wow, their clarity around what's most important is so clear because the penalty for getting it wrong is severe. But for us, it's easy to be distracted. And so I thought, what is our water? What is the one thing that if we do it right now makes everything else better as a result? And how do we think about lists in this way to help us focus our efforts on the one thing that then makes the second and third thing more effective. And we do that again and again and again. And so this idea of prioritization and focus, which to some seems like the antithesis of experimentation and innovation, um, is actually an enabler to experimentation and innovation, thoughtful experimentation. It's not, let's throw a bunch of stuff against the wall. That is distraction. But innovation that has some, some, where the company has some belief that the innovation is going to either defensively set the company up to be resilient and protected or offensively help the company build its future, that requires focus. At the same time, there are things that we all do in our companies over time that end up in a bucket of we need to stop doing. And so focus isn't just about shortening the list of the new stuff that we want to do or that comes our way. It is also about culling what we do, if that even includes positions we have in the company. I remember when we bought Auntie Anne's, which was the largest franchise, because they were standalone small business owners, they literally had a job of a person who went to every franchise location and connected the wires for the POS systems and the computers. It was how they needed to support their rapidly growing small business system. But we had developed remote, technologically enabled systems and upgraded technology to begin with that didn't need that at all. We could, it wasn't about eliminating roles, but repurposing those resources and that talent to go do other things that are needed for now and into the future. So this idea of what's the water, uh, what should we be focused on? What are the few things we should start doing? And similarly, what's at the top of the list of what we should stop doing? And those questions should be asked consistently.